Hello and welcome back to Wake Up with Dr. Cheryl, Wealth Transformation. I'd like to start with something funny. According to most studies, people's number one fear is public speaking. Number two is death. Death is number two. Does that sound right? This means to an average person, if you go to a funeral, you're better off in the casket than doing the eulogy. The Wealth Transformation Movement is for healing the relationship with money and wealth from a mental, conscious, and unconscious awareness, heartfelt and spiritual level healing, and ultimately an unconditional with unconditional love. When you are discontent, you always want more, more, more. Your desire can never be satisfied. But when you practice contentment, you can say to yourself, oh yes, I already have everything I really need by the Dalai Lama. Okay, well, I'm going off script here. A few weeks ago, and I always talk about financial situations and especially ethics. A few weeks ago, I sat in on a hearing that was happening with Marin Municipal Water District. And to tell you the truth, I was there about three and a half hours, and to tell you the truth, I was appalled because some of the employees that testified admitted, it wasn't overtly, but admitted that they were coerced because if they didn't show up at the, the hearing, they would lose their job. Now, to me, that is unethical and it's also, we're paying those, the water district's bills. And, and to me, we need to take a look at the ethics that's happening around the way they spend money. And besides, they spent thousands and thousands of dollars on a psychiatrist and attorneys. And anyway, to me, I can't mention any names, but except for the Marin Water District, Municipal Water District, and to me, it's unethical the way it was handled. We have an interesting guest this evening, Kate Levinson, PhD. This is the first segment of a two-part segment with Kate Levinson. Dr. Kate Levinson brings more than 30 years of experience as a psychotherapist and an author to help others develop a positive awareness and healthy relationship with money. Her work with clients blended with years of personal exploration into her own family's traumatic relationship with money and her arrival at a place of understanding and healing. Create the foundation for her book, Emotional Currency, A Woman's Guide to Building a Healthy Relationship with Money, and her workshops. A licensed Marriage and family therapist in California, Kate holds a PhD in clinical psychology. She is a member and, a, and of and teaching and supervising faculty at the Psycho Psychotherapy Institute in Berkeley, California, and has taught and supervised students at John F. Kennedy University Graduate School of Clinical Psychology. She maintains a private practice in both Oakland and San Rafael hosts emotional currency workshops throughout the United States, and is an expert contributor in behavioral economics on the blog of an online magazine, Psychology Today. Kate resides in the western part of Marin County, California, where she and her husband own and operate Point Reyes Books. Kate helps women and men discover, appreciate, and heal they're often less than productive emotional relationships with money. She has learned and is now showing others that by gaining a deeper understanding of our direct experiences with money, we develop new insights into who we are and what we value and we become able to start making new decisions. Money is powerful, an intimate mirror into ourselves and others and the world we live in. She explains, from both her personal and professional experiences, Kate has learned that how one deals with money is almost never devoid of emotional overtones and intricate intertwining that must be understood to attain financial empowerment. 
Welcome, Kate. I am so happy that you're here. Uh, after meeting you at the, uh, um, the women's conference over at the Dominican College, um, and I thought, well, this is right in alignment with what my show is about. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Dr. You're, Cheryl. Yes, yes, Dr. Kate. <laughs> Do people call you Dr. No, Kate? No, no. Kate's no. good. Kate, okay. Yeah. Um, wow, well, you're an author, and tell us about yourself. Tell us where you're from and, and about yourself. I live in West Marin, not far from here, and uh, I've been a therapist for more than 30 years. And the money work came out of, it came, caught me by surprise, I guess you'd say, that I had thought that I was just fine about money. And Don't most people think they're fine yes. about money? I mean, yes. until something happens. That's right. <laughs> So the thing that happened was that I, uh, we sold our house, which I was very clear was something I wanted to do. And I can remember the moment I said, even if we lose money selling this house, I want to sell it. But then the experience came, oh, and yeah. it didn't feel very good. And in fact, um, I became very anxious and felt that like was, I was a bag lady, actually. Do, do you feel that that was an emotional um, uh, transaction with money? Yes, totally. Okay. So, so the, the experience of not owning a home in an escalating real estate market oh, yeah, that made be... me feel as if I was a bag lady, mm. which I could never have anticipated. It didn't make logical sense, and it sent me back into therapy, which is what the <laughs> therapists do. They go to yeah, therapy. Yeah, well, how do you learn otherwise? That's right. Yeah. And, and so looking, looking at that experience opened up uh, just uh, so much learning for I me. I bet. Yeah, deep understanding mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. why you made that decision. Yes, um, and why I was reacting the way I did. Yeah. So did you go, I'm curious, did you go to a therapist that was specializes with money? No, I went to a therapist. I asked around, and I wanted someone who was, like, the only word I knew to say was clean, clean about money, who didn't oh, have okay. a lot of, yeah. of hang-ups. how do you discern that? Well, <laughs> I don't think you do. I mean, you how can you discern it? Asking friends, colleagues of his, okay. and... That's the that I was directed to someone who I felt very comfortable with okay. because in all my other therapy we never talked about money and yeah, in all well, my and the exterior how you know the facade that that's right. people have can cover up a multitude of really unhealthy behavior and if we don't talk about it <laughs> it, it it is only the facade that's yes, all we absolutely. see absolutely and that we project a lot and so especially as professionals therapists you know. Um, uh, and therapists aren't all that comfortable being public about their vulnerabilities. So, uh, yeah, there, there wasn't really a way of knowing other than to asking, asking uh, colleagues of right. his, oh, sure. friends of his. Sure, sure. But, I, but I was lucky and I found someone who I oh, think good, was, good. was sane. I didn't mean to go off on that, but yeah, no, you know, it's I was a just good curious. Question. I mean, you know. It's a good I mean, point, and, and that's true with financial professionals as well. Absolutely. You know, you don't really know who you're dealing with. So that's no, that's why we have to look at the, from in, interior, mm -hmm. you know, from inside mm -hmm. and look who they're really about. Yeah. And sometimes it does take time to uh, extrapolate that information. That's right. That's right, because there are lots of people who, who lead with... Um, well, just the persona, or lead with what who they, they think. Th what they think that they, they should, should portray. Yes, right. I mean, In order. and that isn't just around money, but that's around. Well, it's it, and of course, money is intertwined with every career, or every profession, or whatever you want to call it. It's it's intertwined with all of that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, this mm -hmm. is a huge subject mm -hmm. is having a healthy relationship with money right. and what dr what drove me was at the corporate level you know where the unethical stuff that was going on so so tell me more about where you know where you went with that so the the therapy was really helpful and i also met with two friends both therapists once a month and we just brought whatever was up for us around money to that meeting 
and I write about it in the book, that after the first meeting, each of us didn't want to go back to the the group. We felt that we'd revealed too much. Oh, so right. just, just yeah. e even though watching the two of them, I didn't think that they'd revealed too much, but I felt I had. Was that, do you feel, do you feel that that was revealing too much because you didn't want your clients to know? No, revealing too much was a, I think a, a felt experience that of shame because oh. we're not used to talking about to one another, right? Oh, okay. Especially about money. Yes. Yeah. So okay. saying okay. anything oh, okay. to our friends. These were wow. women I knew college. Professional. Yeah. 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 Um, but saying anything. Because on that level, aren't you used to talking about clients? Not not yes. saying their names, but you you know yes. you share information about clients. Right. We talk about other and, people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and sometimes we talk about ourselves as well, but we we do not talk about money. We, I mean, we have the same inhibitions that the culture has, I think, where that it's the last taboo, that we're not supposed to talk about it. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's not part of our training. It's yeah. not seen as something psychological, of psychological wow. value. Yeah, Isn't well, that see, astounding? But see, this pattern that's been in our society, especially in America, has been going on for, since the beginning. Well, maybe not since the beginning. But it got way out of balance, way out of balance. So yeah, this yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Totally. So I think what we see in the culture and what we experience individually is a result of that, the, the taboo and the uh, fierce resistance and the generational, to being reflective uh, of that money. Whatever you want to say, it's been a, a locked in generational yeah. Yeah. thing. And so. in terms of gender, too. Yes, yes. So there are lots of reasons that when we bring it out, we feel vulnerable. And um, sometimes when I talk about the book or talk about the subject, I feel that I, in a way I, I don't have anything to say about it because what I have to say is so simple. And but, it is right? simple. It is. <laughs> it's about looking at it emotionally, dealing with it as we deal with all sorts of other emotional issues in our lives, uh, and talking about it. Well, that's the key, you know, because most people don't want to talk about it because fear, shame, and, you know, there's a greed factor, which, yes. you yeah. know, and then there's a not enough factor. Yes. Which, you know, I talk about you know, if you can get into your subconscious mind, there's always more than enough. Because there is. If you really look at it day by day, moment by moment, there's always enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But living in a, in a field of scarcity, living, living in a field of fear, a culture, yes. um, we all are susceptible. And the media. And the media. Is a huge, you know, proponent of of fear yeah. around it, you know, yeah. and, and, and when you think even the advertisements and they, they, they encourage you to spend your money, you know, on your credit card, mm -hmm. which is, is not good, mm -hmm. you know, so we've got all this negative polarity information coming at us all, mm -hmm. all the and time. And we know people who are struggling too. Yes. You know, it's not, we, we've had yes. experiences ourselves where we know people. Well, I've currently. certainly had all my challenges with with money uh, mm -hmm. filing bankruptcy and and being being s scammed and you know i've had a lot of mm -hmm. situation myself. it's hard not to have uh traumatic experiences well Maybe it's impossible yes, because how do you grow if yeah. you don't have challenges how do you grow mm -hmm. and especially around money if if it's been handed to you then how do you appreciate it right that's how right. i i mean Right. You know, of course, sometimes I wish that I hadn't gone through such, <laughs> such trauma around it, you know, but th then I know that there's something better that's going, to, that's happening, that, that is happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so where were you, where are you from originally? I'm from Los Angeles. Oh, okay. And um, I think that whenever we talk about money, it's very autobiographical, isn't it? I mean, it's hard. It, we each have our own idiosyncratic relationship to it and in the culture thing too yes um, and knowing that knowing what contributes to what we what our makeup is is a big piece of the work is just knowing where we come from and making some decisions about 
what money is in our lives, not just accepting what we were raised with. So, so tell me what you mean about, um, you know, explain a little bit so more. So just in terms of saying, I was, I was raised in LA and I come from, um, uh, my mother was raised with wealth and my father's father died when my dad was really young and there was a pension but my dad from the age of eight always I think felt pressured to um, to contribute to help mm -hmm. to help the family out um, his mother and his two siblings my mother never worried about money um, and then uh, well that was a good thing actually it, I mean it it was a good thing though I think also um, you know everything's very complicated but I think her sense of self even though it was a she was a generation of women where women didn't need to work for self-value right, right. but I think her her sense of self-worth might have been higher if she had um, actually yeah. navigated yeah. some of uh, some of the earning mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. management of money, if yes. she hadn't always been in, uh, dependent oh, either. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, so I, I wasn't yeah, understanding but, that. Yeah, but it was a good thing, too, that yeah. she, she didn't have a lot of trauma around money. So there wasn't any, there weren't a lot of fights around money. Well, there, except that um, my stepsister, my mother's daughter, um, who was a very important person in my life and a wonderful person, uh, but also very self-destructive, she became addicted to heroin. Oh God! So uh, well, that's like throwing money away. Yeah, exactly. And so, for your, so your my sister. parents fought about that, oh. given such different backgrounds, especially yeah. because my father's security in life came from earning money, having money. Mm -hmm. My mother's security came from spending it, <laughs> giving it, yeah. using it, mm -hmm. um, but to a fault. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so there. So that's that dynamic that was. You had kind of a, um, uh, well, you had two, this is very common though, to have yes. two different, you know, it's That's like, right. what do I do? What, what, uh, yes, parents you know. who give you very different messages about money, yes, yes. and then sometimes who were in great conflict about it. Yeah, right. So, uh, but what's interesting to me was that I lived through all of this. I mean, I knew about my sister. I lived through it. I talked about it in therapy a lot, but I never looked at it through the lens of money. And I never so tell looked me at my that. parents. Yeah. So just coming to understand, I had made, at the time I'd made my father really the, the evil one because he, he fought my mother so much about mm -hmm. money. My mother had to go and sell her blood at times or just, you know, really sell antiques oh. in the house to give money to my sister oh, because oh, my oh, father wow. held the purse strings yes. even though it was my mother's the, money. The control. Right? Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I came to see that my, what I had just said a few moments ago, that my father's sense of security really came from holding on to the money, that it wasn't just that he um, uh, didn't love my sister, um, didn't want to support my sister, didn't want to help her to get better. But he, but he needed for his navigating through this trauma. He needed to hold on to the money, mm -hmm. whereas my mother um, used money too much as the answer. You know yeah. that the answer was money did not save my sister. And yet my mother thought that was the only thing my mother knew to yeah, do. Yeah, that was yeah. That so was under, the limitation that she had. Exactly. So, that's, but seeing that, understanding it. Yeah. And, and I think so that's when, true for everybody. Yeah, oh, when absolutely. we can when we can go over the experiences of childhood, go over the, the It's necessary in order to get to the core issue. That's right. In in that's anything, right. really, in anything. But especially yes. since I tend to focus you tend to focus on money, we have to get to the core issues about that. Right. So we can heal it and then go forward so we don't make the same mistake. So for me, seeing that money was about life or death, mm. you know, those calls, those frantic yes. calls of my sisters from yes. New York saying, they're turning the heat off, you know, mm. I send the money now or the, yeah. the drug dealers are coming after me, send me the money now, that, 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 I, that money was life or death and that yeah. I had lived my life as if that was true, my adult life, yeah. when in fact money was not about life or death for me. No. 
and seeing that and healing that and realizing that it wasn't money that was going to save me in a catastrophe was incredibly liberating. Very, very um, uh, well, transformative for me. Uh, yes, and you know, and it all comes down to that unconditional love. I still, no matter what anybody says about money, it always comes down to loving yourself unconditionally and loving your family and your friends unconditionally. And money is the second. Mm -hmm. Well, and money doesn't give that to us. No, it's just a, it's an energy. It's an exchange. That's all mm -hmm. it is, you know. And mm -hmm. that's that's why, I, you know, I focus on this is because shifting, you know, the 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 wealth transformation movement is shifting that whole dynamic. That you know, really, the relationships with others and the love is more important than the money. Yes, we need money as an exchange. I mean, look what happened. When, when, you know, back in the beginning when the Chinese created the exchange, the tobacco, they didn't exchange. It's just so out of balance. Mm -hmm. and, the, and I believe that from a spiritual, mm -hmm. you know, standpoint, that the value needs to, that's why I call it wake up, because our humanity can't go on like this. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not money that comes first. It's the, the hum, human, you know, relationships that come first, that love that comes first. You know, money is actually easy. If you, if you believe it's so interesting. It, I always say money is really hard. Yes, go ahead. But, go but ahead. see, it's it's the yeah, and see, a lot of people say money is is very what you just said. Mm -hmm. Money is hard. Well, it's not. It's easy. If you believe that there's more than enough, and that's a deep unconscious that becomes conscious, and you live from that modem that M.O., you know, if when you live from that, then it, it works. Mm -hmm. I'm living proof of it mm -hmm. because I have, I have suffered some great losses and trusted the wrong people. I didn't trust myself enough. I trusted so... Mm, it's hard but when not you, to, yeah. Y yeah, you right. know, so when you, when you know that, right. and it takes work. Right. And so when, I guess when I say money's hard, I feel like it, ne it needs attention and we need to talk about it and we need to look at it internally, and that that's hard in this culture, right? It's a hard, it's a hard thing to break through to getting that, that money is an inside job. I guess I resist the Which word is, hard yes. just because, but no, I totally agree right. with you because it is a huge subject. I mean, mm -hmm. it is huge. Mm -hmm. most, you know, most, like you said, most people don't want to talk about it. Um, because there's issues, you know, as I said, the fear, the, the shame, you know, the greed, which really, you know, but the fear and the shame are the biggest, Yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, and that's what makes it hard. But that's again, th again, I don't like to say hard because then that makes like there's a block there mm -hmm. where I say it's, it's, you know, it's a challenge, which is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's, that's how yes. I approach things, yes. you know, so whatever comes right. at me, it's like, okay, this is. This is an opportunity. Right. So it's the same thing with money. Right. I mean, and being able to talk about it requires that we each understand ourselves or have the willingness to understand ourselves yes. and the language we use and what, what, what money holds for us and be able to see what money holds for the other person. You know, because we, we so often project onto people yes. what we what we think well, we about all money. project. <laughs> yeah, we, we all, all do. We all do. Yeah, and and we judge one another. We judge yeah, ourselves, oh, and that's that's the key is not judging uh -huh, yourself. Uh -huh. And I'm I'm learning that. Yeah, not judging yourself. That's where that unconditional love comes yeah. in. Unconditional love, and I just, I'm going to say that till my dying day. <laughs> unconditional. There's love. There's a word that I really like to say is to become curious about who we are in relationship to money, you know, yeah, which, well, which implies yes. kind of, I think, that out, getting out of the judgment makes, then we can see and we can, we can, we can well, come having, up with different resolutions yeah, or it, solutions. Yes, and you can, until you can see clearly, how can you resolve something? Mm -hmm. you, can, you really mm -hmm. can't. No. So, like you said, having the willingness, the curiosity mm -hmm. to look at that. Yeah. You know, when things aren't working the way you want them to, or where the you, way you, you think they should go, then you've got to take a look at it. Yeah. And maybe we could say that um, 
That's interesting because I don't, I don't use the terminology unconditional love, even though I really I think it's so powerful. But, but being curious and having compassion for the challenge, having compassion for the difficult situation that we're in, and having compassion for yourself yes. in that difficult situation. Right. That's where it stems from. That's yeah. where the root. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And then we can look for help. You know, yes. that's, that's the other piece. I think that the, the shame and the fear keeps us feeling that we're the only ones. You know, we have to hide. We have to hide it versus um, realizing that we all have our own challenges. And Every, that, everybody on everybody, this planet does. Whether they even, have a gazillion dollars and, and or not. And you know what? Even uh, uh, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, they all have challenges. Yeah. It's all relative. Yeah. You know. I'll leave you with this. Love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive by the Dalai Lama. New research from the notable Mayo Clinic has shown that self-affirmation can protect you from the damaging effects of stress. An example is, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough. This kind of positive self-talk actually works. In other words, if you're nervous, that you're going to crack under pressure, giving yourself a little pep talk can help you ace an exam or presentation. Though a little bit of stress is good, sustained stress can rob you of your energy and focus make us less productive and more prone to mistakes. This research suggests that if you're under pressure, you can refocus and perform better by simply taking a moment to think about your most important values my interjection is to write and say to yourself, I love myself unconditionally, and keep this in front of you for more than 28 days so it becomes an unconscious to conscious habit. Never give up for your pursuit of your purpose and passion, and even if you don't know what that is, work with integrity and have a positive attitude wherever you work and especially with your family and your friends. Be grateful for what you have who you are, and be grateful for your freedom. And eat healthy. Good nutrition feeds the mind and your body, your body temple. And don't forget to exercise. Move your body, feed your spirituality with meditation and prayer, with unconditional love, and firstly, love yourself unconditionally, and share your abundance and wealth with others. Thanks for watching. Please support Marin TV that brings these messages. And remember, when fear knocks, let faith answer the door. Bye for now, until the next time.